Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Uh, yes, everybody. I'm not going to show my picture yet because, uh, well, I don't want to show my picture yet. Okay. Anyway, uh, let me see here. Oh, I thought I was hearing a hum. I'm not hearing a hum. I'm not hearing a hum. No, not really hearing a hum. Okay. Got all kinds of things I have to worry about here, all the technology, and it starts vexing me the older I get. Anyway, uh, hey, listen, I thought we'd start off tonight by checking in uh, with an old friend, a really old friend. Ladies and gentlemen, he's round and he's brown. No, that's not, I can't, that doesn't work. You're actually but it rhymes. Thin, <laughs> well, that's good. Thin and you're grim. I think that's maybe the best way to put it. Grim and slim. Grim and slim. And uh, his name, Larry, is Larry Bubbles Brown. Yes, hello. Uh, uh, the bubbles connoting a certain amount of uh, happiness and joy and uh, a, a joie de vivre where it comes to life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How you doing? Good, good. I had uh, I heard a name the other day, and I I could have wikied it, but I I wanted to see because I said I bet Alex knows a lot about her. But yeah, uh, Hedy Lamar. Yeah. Oh, you know it's funny. Uh, it's funny because I was just watching a show last night. It's a, uh, uh, one of these sci-fi shows called Timeless, in which they go back to various periods, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, they go back to Hollywood in 41, and they meet up with Hedy Lamar. And, of course, the whole story about Hedy Lamar is revealed there. But she was also the, uh, another subject of another show I saw about time travel a couple of months ago. Uh, she, oh, she also, I think, I, I can't remember, I think it's in the show Agent Carter she played a part, too. Um, so what do you want to know about Hedy Lamar? It's the most fascinating. Well, I, just, I, li- watched, I saw something on TV and there was just a little, I caught it at the end. There was a little blurb. It's uh, something about she was a genius and she might, was she a spy or something? No, no, no. Here, and that's all I heard. Okay. Here, 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 you want me to give you a little yeah. short thing of Hedy Lamar's life? Uh, and it's, it, it's a pretty fascinating one. She, um, okay. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, in case you don't know who Hedy Lamar was, she was maybe one of the most beautiful women to ever grace um, a Hollywood screen. Uh, she was discovered. She had done her first film in, I think it was Sweden, where she was from. And uh, it was uh, called Ecstasy. And she became sensational because she was naked. Uh, and uh, uh, I, don't, I don't think she did it under the name Hedy Lamar, But anyway... As time went on, one thing led to another, and she was working Europe, and she met up with this guy uh, who was best friends with Adolf Hitler. (laughs) (laughs) And she used to go to dinners with Hitler. Wow. Uh, um, But while this was going on, I mean, she hated Hitler. She hated Mm -hmm. the Nazis. She hated her life with this husband. But this husband, I think, was involved in some kind of scientific pursuits. And so she learned a lot while she was hanging around him. And then at one point, she just said, I can't take this whole Nazi thing. I can't take his involvement with Hitler. And she got out of Germany. And I think on the boat over or something, she was discovered by Louis B. Mayer, who said, you're gorgeous. Why don't you come to Hollywood and let me give you a screen test? So she went to Hollywood, did a screen test, and next thing you know, she's in the movies. Um, I think I'm getting it right. I'm sure if I have my friend Shecky here, he would tell me where I'm getting it wrong. But Mm -hmm. I I hope I'm getting most of it right. The most important part is what's coming up, not what went in the past. So she uh, made movies, uh, but uh, she also kind of liked to putter around with scientific stuff. And uh, she, she had a, a friend, his name was George Ann Thiel, who was a motion picture composer. 
And together, they, 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 this was the start of World War II, and they needed something for uh, torpedoes, I believe it was. And it was called, uh, and they invented a thing so that a torpedo couldn't be detected, so that other torpedoes could knock it out of the water, called frequency skipping. Don't ask me to explain it to you, I'm not mm -hmm. a scientist. But it, they came up with this concept of frequency skipping. In other words, uh, uh, so that you can't zero in on the torpedo or even on a bomb, I guess. Uh, it it changes frequencies constantly so that nothing can aim in on it. All right. That, that's that's the short of it. All right. Well, forget about what frequency skipping is and what the technology of it is. The Defense Department never used it. However, they did in 1952. They decided to finally use it because they saw a value in it. And that value became things like, uh, I think, radar was an outgrowth of frequency skipping. And what you have today that is the result of Hedy Lamar's invention is Wi-Fi, cell phones, wow. All the stuff, the, the basic uh, thing that makes that work in it is frequency skipping. And if, if when in 19, uh, I think it was in like 1986 or 80s or something like that, she tried to claim the rights to the patent, which had expired, and she couldn't. Had she been able to, think of how much money that woman would have been worth. <laughs> But she invented what you ha thank you have to thank Hedy Lamar for your cell phone, okay? A lot of other things too, but cell phones, that's what your life is better for. And it was all because of Hedy Lamar, this the one of the most gorgeous women ever to work movies. And, so and she, she had this hot genius. She, she was a hot genius, yes. Now, there's some people that claim, oh, well, she kind of grabbed the idea from somebody else, and uh, she, maybe it was her Nazi friends in Germany when she was hanging with them that she got these ideas. But no matter how it came about, she gave the world frequency skit hopping, mm. as well as uh, George Ann Thiel. So uh, we should thank him as well. Uh, and uh, uh, she, uh, she lived to be a ripe old age, a crabby old woman, uh, and uh, she uh, just was a terrific, uh, terrific inventor. Um, okay, but not not a huge film career when she got here. Oh, her film career was huge. Really? I, oh, I, yes. I, she. I mean, she starred in uh, Cecil B. DeMille's Samson and Delilah, for an example. But oh, she had a, a continual movie career here, and is forever remembered as a joke in Blazing Saddles, where the the governor of the state is uh, known. Uh, no, the the, the uh, what do you call it? The uh, the guy. Uh, I'm trying to remember what part. It wasn't the Mel Brooks part, but it was the part that uh, what's his name played. Uh, was a uh, what, what? What was he? he? Was like a sheriff or no? He wasn't a sheriff. He was like a marshal or something. Whatever. The bad guy in the picture uh, was uh, named Hedley Lamar. Hedley. And every now and then they go, uh, Hedy? And he goes, no, Headley. <laughs> so that's how she's, uh, she's known. But that, yeah, I, a, knew, I knew you would know about her. Oh, uh, that, that's one of the stories. That's one of my favorite stories. In, in, uh, there's a documentary that came out a while back on the whole thing on Hedy Lamar. See, I think I have it here. Uh, and it, it's, just, it's just a fascinating story. Because, you know, like if you found out that, you know, Marilyn Monroe invented the atom bomb, <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, it, it was like, here's this, this woman who's nothing but a sex object on screen. She's, a, and she's gorgeous, just ravishingly gorgeous. And, and you, then you think she invented my cell phone or what's in my cell phone that makes my cell phone work. And the answer is yes. You, you, next time you hear of Hedy Lamar. Remember that name. If you know this movie on television, watch it and see what she looks like because she was gorgeous. She was just gorgeous. So Incredible. Yeah. So where did you hear about it? I said, I, there, I, there's some program. I, I just got the very end about Hedy, something about Hedy Lamar, and she was a genius and blah. And that's all I heard. So Yeah. 
Yeah. I thought rather than wiki it, I'd talk to you. Yeah. You? Yeah, uh, that's that's the story of Hedy Lamar. She's one of the great stories in Hollywood. I mean, they, that's not a story you expect to hear. You know. Did she marry anybody famous over here? Uh, I don't think she had any famous uh, husbands. Let me let me look her up here a second here, and we'll we'll find out. I I don't think she married anybody famous here. She may not have even gotten married. I I don't know. I, I forget now. Hedy Lamar, Wikipedia. Oh God, there's her picture. She's just gorgeous. Um, early life, European career. First marriage in August 1993. Married Mandy, an Australian military arms merchant. That's who he was. A munitions manufacturer, reputedly the third richest man in Austria. She was 18 years old. He was 33. And uh, she, he was an extremely controlling husband, and she strongly uh, objected to her, her simulated orgasm scene in ecstasy and prevented her from pursuing an acting career. She claimed that she was a virtual prisoner, uh, and then uh, uh, he had business in, with the fascist government in Italy, selling music, munitions to Mussolini. You can see why she left the guy. Yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> Daddy Warbucks. Yeah. In uh, 1937, she met Louis B. Mayer, who was scouting talent in Europe. See, I was close on that one. Yeah, you're right on. Yeah, persuaded her to change her name to Hetty Lamar. Uh, 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 she had been known as the Ecstasy Lady. Uh, choosing the surname uh, homage to a beautiful silent star, Barbara Lamar. Okay, well, that, gives, that gives us that. And then it says, although Hedy Lamar had a no formal training and primarily self-taught, she worked in spare time on various hobbies and inventions, which included an improved traffic stoplight and a tablet, <laughs> a tablet that would dissolve in water to create carbonated drink. The beverage was unsuccessful. Lamar herself said it tasted like Alka Seltzer. <laughs> uh, among the few and over inventiveness uh, was aviation tycoon Howard Hughes. He discussed her relationship with Hughes during an interview, saying that they, while they dated, she actively supported her tinkering and hobbies. Uh, blah 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 blah. Now, where does it say what uh, what she what she invented? It doesn't. Say here, wait a minute, hold on a second. Oh, here we go. Uh, with the knowledge she had gained about torpedoes from her first husband, that's where I was right too, she thought of creating a frequency hopping signal that could be tracked, uh, that could not be tracked or jammed. But she, con uh, she contacted a friend and pianist, George M. Field, to help develop the device during that, and he succeeded by synchronizing a miniaturized player piano mechanism with radio signals. And they crafted designs for frequency hopping system, which they patented. Okay? Uh, so th there, there you go. Uh, later years, Lamar became a nationalized citizen. Does it say she married anybody? She was arrested for shoplifting. I forgot that one. That's not good. <laughs> yeah, the charges were eventually dropped. Uh, there were some claims that she wasn't shoplifting. It was an accident. You know, one of those things where she picked something up. And, yeah. You know. It doesn't say anything about being married to anybody else. Wow. Yeah. So I guess she She's didn't a, marry anybody else. That's a else. strong woman. Yeah. I think she had a relationship, though, with uh, George Ann Thiel, her co-inventor on that deal. But uh, on the show last night, uh, the the guy in the in the who goes back to the past uh, to meet and meets her uh, tells her, "Hey, listen, in 1952, renew that patent." You know. <laughs> so when they come back to the present, it turns out that Hedy Lamar made thirty billion dollars in her lifetime. <laughs> Hilarious. But you know, I mean, that would have been that would have been a lot of money for her. You know, uh, and she did sue. She did try to get the patent back, but she couldn't. So, you know, and she was pretty old by the time she went after that. Oh, wait a minute, Sp Sp spouses. Uh, here it is. Uh, Fred Fritz Mandy, who we mentioned. Uh, Jean Markey in 1939. Then she married Tony Stauffer. Then she married Howard Lee. And then she married Louis Boys. 
Well, uh, I'm, and she has three children. She had three children. And, um, uh, but, uh, you know, I said I didn't know if she was married. She was married, what, one, two, three, five times? Wow. But, you know, she was a, she, yeah, she was an independent woman. She was. Independent. So she did a yeah. nude movie in the 30s. That's pretty. Uh, yeah, well, that was the of start time. of her career. She hadn't done anything before that. And they, it was, it's a scene. You, you can still get it. You know, uh, when she died, uh, I put a picture of her up on my Facebook page, and it was the picture of her coming out of the water in ecstasy, topless, and Facebook censored it. <laughs> yeah, and I wrote I wrote Facebook a nasty letter saying this is this was fair comment on a woman whose life was exceptional, you know, mm -hmm. and this was her most in many ways this was her most famous moment. Because that, this this picture became a sensation in the United States too. Because hey, there's a nude woman coming out of the water. It's just a brief scene, you know. But uh, so, what the hell, you know? Well, um, so. that's why their stock is diving now. <laughs> any <laughs> any any other questions, Sensei? Uh, <laughs> See, I can give you some name. You can go on for ten, twenty minutes with it. It's great. Well, because you know, I think it's one of those names. The people, A, shouldn't dismiss as just another pretty face and should know what she did. And it's, mm -hmm. it's happening more and more because people are now putting it in fiction. You know, she becomes a character in fiction, uh, like the show called Timeless, uh, because it is a fascinating story, you know, and um, uh, she deserves to be recognized. And it's not that she invented something that we no longer use. I mean, the... the basic premise for what she was doing is used in cell phones today. I think it's used in other things too, like radar and, uh, you know, GPS and whatever. I, you know, I, I can't tell you all the things that, that it's used in, but well, somebody uh, should make a movie about her. Uh, you know, they never have done a movie about her. Um, you know, so anyway, um, well, there was a Broadway play called Frequency Hopping that features the life of Lamar Nanthiel. Uh, really? Yeah. Um, in uh, May 20th, 2010, Lamar was selected out of 150 people to be featured in a short film launched by the British, British Computer Society. Um, hmm. Public exhibits, uh, the story of Lamar's uh, frequency hopping spread spectrum invention was explored in an episode of Science Channel show Dark Matters. Um, it goes on and on. There are a lot of places she, he, she was uh, depicted. Um, they don't mention, oh yeah, the, the main villain, an Agent Carter in the late 1940s. That's a, sh a show that was on a few years ago. Uh, Whitney Frost was a character modeled on Hedy Lamar. <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah, and uh, death and film awards uh, uh, doesn't have anything else there. But she, and she did a lot of movies. You can go back and Google. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, go to IMDb and just put in Hedy Lamar. Okay. She see. lived a long time. Yeah. I, oh yeah. She lived to be. Gee. Hold on a second. Let me go back to my uh, Wikipedia, which is the godsend. Uh, age eighty-five. Okay. Yeah. Died in 2000. Um, but, yeah, I do remember she then later got stuck for that uh, that uh, shoplifting charge, whatever that was about. I can't remember now, but it turns out I think that she really didn't do it. It was a, it was a what can we call it, a, uh, a mistake. But whatever. We owe her a lot, so... So we what's, can forgive her one shoplift for yeah, yeah, the what, frequency hopping. Yeah, thanks. For, well, but the thing was that the Defense Department didn't use it till 1952. And then they used it in uh, against Cuba or something. I can't remember what war. They, they used it in something, maybe in the Korean War or whatever. But they never used it. They took the invention. They, they bought it from them uh, and uh, put it on the shelf and never used it. And then in... 1952, they started using it, but by then she hadn't she hadn't even thought about renewing the the uh, patent on it, and so consequently the patent fell into what is essentially public domain. She'd and, been a billionaire. 
Yeah, well, I, you know, yes, absolutely. Uh, but, uh, you know, somewhere there should be a statue to her. I don't know. You know, holding a cell phone or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Topless. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there, you know, there are a lot of other, you know, there are a lot of other people who, who have done stuff that just get, you, you, later on in life you find out they did that, you know, and mm. you go, hey, that's amazing, you know. And she's she's one of the major ones. Uh, so anyway, how's everything out in California? Oh, eighty degrees and allergy riddled. <laughs> allergy riddled, yeah. Yes. Oh, uh, uh, God, it's getting so crowded. You can't move around here anymore. I, uh, I gotta move. You know, I have not been back to San Francisco. Oh God, God I think since Marjorie and I got married and we were in Lake Tahoe. I think it's the last okay. time I was back in San Francisco, so that would have to be six years ago. And uh, a guy, buddy, loves staying with me here, and he said that uh, it's pretty nasty in that city. Oh, it's <laughs> horrible! It's just high-rise buildings everywhere. They've destroyed Van Ness Avenue. I mean, I wouldn't would I I wouldn't recognize it, right? No, they've taken all the. There used to be a. Island in Van. Remember, Van Ness Avenue had trees and stuff down the middle of it. Those have all been ripped out. Why? Because they're gonna. They took two lanes out. They're gonna run m buses in, down the middle of Van Ness. So there's only two lanes for cars now. It looks like crap. Oh boy. Oh boy. And, you know, like, there goes a, a beautiful city. And uh, but, yeah. Well, well, when you get back here, you'll see it. I think uh, you'll be. The end uh, will be when they use the cable cars for kindling wood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be, you're going to be very depressed when you see well, you your know, hometown. You, you know what happens with, with certain cities, and it's happened here in New York. New York is not the city it used to be. You know, it's not the city I fell in love with, that big, dirty city that never slept. You know, that, that city. Mm -hmm. Now now everybody goes to sleep at 11. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you know, the... It, it, the same things kind of happen here, like down on in Times Square. They've turned that into a place where people can sit out and, at tables in the middle of the fucking street, you know, and it's, they've turned it into one lane or so going through Times Square. It's the same, same kind of thinking. But the problem is that you have in San Francisco a bunch of people who came to the Bay Area, and they weren't born there, you know, weren't raised there. I don't think you were raised there. But no, you certainly no. lived there long enough to have an affinity for the town, right? And I, but I was born there. And then they have, they have, they want to turn it into their ideal of what a city should be. And it's not it, but it's the ideal of what Cleveland is, or uh, yeah. you know, whatever. <laughs> and it's not the, uh, it's not taking what is, and respecting its its style and its feel and so on. And San Francisco was a very tactile city. I mean, you really felt it, you know. Uh, it, it, was, it was a city that had a lot of beauty to it in its architecture and everything. And if that's being ripped away, boy, that's not yeah, my when town. When I first came here, they, the thing that they didn't want here, I remember they didn't want high rises. Now it's just full of them. Wow. But it had that it had to look like a European city. Now there weren't tall buildings, and it was very cool. Wow, jeez, Almighty! I just you know that that's it, it's just sad. It's very sad. I hate to see it happening. Yeah, there's this huge building now. I think it's like 80 stories. It's called the Salesforce Tower down where. Remember where the uh, the old bus station used to be down yeah. there at Market, and so that thing is. Uh, Everyone said it looks like a giant dildo. That's the uh... yeah. Well, here, here, you know, I mean, it's San Francisco. I was amazed when I heard from Buddy that uh, the uh, that they're building these buildings that are eighty stories high. Because in San Francisco, there was a law you couldn't build a, a building taller than twenty. I think twenty or thirty. Yeah, twenty or thirty. It had to do with the earthquakes, but it also had to do with the fact they didn't want to. View, yeah. They didn't want to obliterate the hills, which right. are. A trademark of San Francisco, and if you put up a lot of tall buildings, you're, and then you take a picture, say from Treasure Island, you're not going to be able to see those hills. No. 
Well, it, you'll see when you get out here. Well, maybe I don't have any desire to now. <laughs> you, got to. you know, I mean, what? I'm going to go back to that city and I'm going to cry all, all day long. You might. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's the home of my birth. You know, it's my, my birthright, that city. And I, I, I protect it like, uh, oh, like I feel I'm protecting this apartment, which is a hundred and what? 18 years old. You know, uh, I'm protecting it from them coming in and doing uh, renovations, you know, and lowering mm-hmm. the ceilings and pulling out the wood. and blah, 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 Because, quite frankly, restoration is important. I, I, I believe in updating, but you do it through restoration. You don't do it through renovation. Now that's, you know, that's what it's all about. Hey, look, I just noticed uh, we, we're quickly running out of time here. Time flies when Hedy Lamar is brought up. Well, you know, what I can always count on with you, and the reason I like talking with you is because we have a conversation that makes me talk about stuff. And you mm-hmm. always have, you always come prepared with something, you know, that, that, that you go, hey, who was Hedy Lamar? And then I yeah, go, Yeah, well, I'll see something. I, I, I immediately think e- either my father would know something about that or Alex would know something. So I always yeah, yeah. Well, check mark that for well, you. Well, you were correct on that. End of it. Yeah, well, you you know everything about movies, so not everything about movies. When you want to do that, you talk to my friend Checky. He knows everything yeah. about movies. Hey, it's time to say goodbye. See you in uh, great, uh, great talking to you, Alex. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the personage, personages, the thing, the uh, the Grim Reaper, uh, Larry yeah. Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Bubs. Thank you. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. All right, there we go. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I got to. I I don't know. I I'm not good. I'm not good at this anymore. There we go. There's me. Hi. How are you? What's happening? Hey. Huh? How are you? Oh, uh, boy. Uh, that was Larry Bubbles Brown. And uh, we'll have him again in a couple of, about another week. Uh, I love Bubs. Just love Bubs. Love talking to him. He gets me talking. Let me see here. Let me open up the phones. I hear it's going to be a feel free night tonight because he's got his photo club or something. He wants to, he's, he's gotten into winning these awards every week. So uh, he, uh, he's going again to win another award at his little, little thing. It is a little thing. Let me do this. I'm, boy, I, I uh, no, that's not good either. Ah, fuck. Uh, no, that's too high. That's too low. Let me see here. I'm, I'm, I, for those who are listening to the radio version of this, I'm trying to adjust my my picture so that I would uh, I'm uh, I'm uh, a little bit better situated in the picture. Because I've been I've been playing around with this because I'm doing an interview tomorrow with uh, my friend Jack Garfine, and um, because I'm doing the thing with Jack, uh, I need to uh, here we go. I need to go up. There we go. All right, there we are. Okay, that's better. And then I have to pan it a little bit over, 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 uh, just a little bit. There we go. Okay, now I've. And I've got my picture right. Let me see here. No, so I'm doing my interview tomorrow with my friend Jack Garfine, and I, I really don't know how to do it. I mean, I know how to do it. I know how to do an interview. Um, uh, I've been doing that for years, but um, uh, I have, uh, uh, you know, I, I just, uh, let me see here. Let me try moving this a little bit that way. There we go. No, this way, this way, this way, this way. Yeah, yeah. Can't get the picture right. So I'm doing this interview tomorrow with my friend Jack Garfine, uh, who's got some interesting things to say. He's 87 years old, and um, he he's lived an amazing, amazing life. And so I, I don't know how to do the interviews, and I was going to sit down and do two hours with him. Then I decided, nah, he's an older guy, an hour. And then I decided I'm going to do half hours with him that we can play off on the show. So I'm going to tell them that, you know, we'll stop after a certain amount, of, after the first half hour, and then we'll start another half hour and we'll let them rest for a second and whatever, and then we'll get back to it. But uh, that, that to me, is, is the best way to handle it. So I'm, and I'm so, 
edgy about doing this interview because I really want it to be good. It, it's, it's such a fascinating life that he's led, and uh, I want it to be good. So, Anyway, the phones are open. Nobody's calling. If I don't hear from somebody in five minutes, I'm ending the show and going to go to sleep. <laughs> I just... There are nights I come in here and I go, how am I going to get through an hour and a half? Because that's what happens after I play whatever interview I have. And uh, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't really gripe about that. But it's a straight hour and a half. It's not like I used to do in radio where I used to do, you know, uh, five minutes. And I used to do uh, th four hours or three hours, depending on where I was working. But the fact was that there were maybe you know, at least a third of that time was taken up with commercial and, and newscasts and things like that. So I didn't have to talk constantly for two hours like I do here. So tomorrow I may be even more exhausted because I'm going to be uh, dealing with, uh, with uh, Jack. And uh, that's going to exhaust me completely. Anyway, here, ladies and gentlemen... The lovely and attractive Jeff Stein is calling. Uh, let me just, um, I mean, I got to do a few things here. I'm just, you, t you ever have those days, uh, Jeff, uh, as you get into your dotage, where you just don't seem to be able to do anything right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know? Oh, I have a whole list of things I used to do. Yeah, that you used to do. I mean, I, 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 here's the one I hate. I go into the kitchen to get something. All right. And then when I get to the kitchen, I forgot what I was going to the kitchen to get. Is that a common occurrence with you? Yeah, that's, that's, that happens. Is that, that, that's par for the course, huh? Oh, boy. Well, I, I'm looking for my cell phone tonight. You, oh, you're looking for your cell <laughs> did you Did you see it? <laughs> well, you know how I get my cell phone. I'll show you. I'll show you here. Uh, how I how I managed to get my cell phone. Uh, I uh, here's my cell phone, right? And then I have my uh, Apple Watch, okay. And I go to the Apple Watch, and I I, I uh, 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 hold on a second. Got to move this thing up. Then I move this whole thing up, where I have all these little gadgets, and I push on one button, and I say, where where is my phone? And I go. See, not bad, huh? And and if I can't find it, the other day I couldn't find it. And I went in the bedroom, and it was it was in the bedroom, but it was muff, muffled. It was muffled, and I finally found it under the sheets. I had made the bed over the phone, so <laughs> you know. So so you you in other words, you can't find your phone. No, and uh, I called it on my wife's cell phone. Yeah. And I couldn't hear it anywhere in the house. So it must be somewhere, like you say, with something on top of it, hiding. Oh, okay. You know it's in the house somewhere. I think so. I think so. You think so? Well, I knew I was in, I was in the car talking to her. Yeah. And, and, of course, I went back to the car. And, uh, it doesn't seem to be in the car. But yeah. Whatever. So you, you don't know where it is then? what you're saying well my granddaughter has a, a system where she can find out exactly where it is oh really yeah she How has some you... software but it's past 10 o'clock and she has to be in. oh wait, wait a minute wait a minute she goes to is, school. It, is it an apple phone yeah okay so yeah. Uh, and do you have um uh let me see here uh you should be able to do you, you don't have an ipad do you uh, my wife has. Oh, well, I don't. well, you can use the i. Well, no, then it would only tell you it was in the house. Yeah. But at least you'd know it was in the house. It isn't like downtown at a restaurant somewhere or something right. or someplace you went, hello, John Perulis. But what Hi, you do, what everybody. You, what you do is you go to um, your iPad, and there's a program called Find My Phone. Yeah. <laughs> I am. I'm familiar with it. I, I use it. You, you use it. I use a. I use a, a, a coat hanger to find my lost things. I know a coat hanger. Okay, I bend it out and I, I make it uh, dousing rods out of it. I see, and then you and, go. Uh, I douse for things. I've actually found a few things that way. Yeah, sure, sure. 
Sure. No, well, I'll, okay, sure. Alex, I'll do a video. That was a real agricultural con job you just did on us. <laughs> no, no, I'm not kidding. I'm going to find water. Sense. Just I've got my magic stick, and we're going to go divining the water. Right. Okay. Do you want to hear the story? I'll 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 lay it out for you the way it happened. Okay. Well, we'll try. My to, wife. We'll try to believe it. Okay. My wife lost her keys. Okay, and okay. she was very upset. Mm -hmm. So I said, "Honey, let me try and douse for it." So we live in a two-level home. So I started downstairs, and I held my coat hanger dousing rods very parallel to the floor. Yeah. And maybe about six. Six inches apart, yeah. And these these two little things were like wiggling around, and now, uh, I didn't get any around? reading. Were they wiggling around uh, downstairs? Were you subconsciously making them wiggle around? No. Well, you, you're trying to hold them really steady, uh, you know, without them, you know, without trying to yeah. be an actor oh. and, and do something yeah. with them, right? Sure. So, okay, I did nothing happened. So I go upstairs, go in one room, uh, no, nothing. So then I go into the bedroom, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, the two tips of the thing start touching like that. So then I go into the closet, and they're like really going crazy, okay? So I look down, and I don't see anything. There's just her shoes, right? So I'm thinking, wait a minute. I'm getting a really strong reading here. There's got to be something. So I went down, and I started pushing the shoes aside. Wait a minute. Because I, I thought. Don't stop right there for a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is anybody believing this so far? No. Okay, keep going. <laughs> okay, well, I'm just really telling you the truth, you know. I, um, <clears throat> Superman never lies. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so then I, I'm rattling these uh, uh, shoes aside, and I start hearing something. So I look inside one of the shoes was her keys. They had fallen and slipped down uh and I credit that with my dousing rod. Now, what's my success ratio? I'd say about 30%. So that means 70% I don't find anything. But 30%, it, it isn't, rings it, true. It, so it, you tell me. Isn't 30% about the chance you'd have of finding it if you were looking for it without the dousing rod? Uh, the dousing rod sped the whole process up. It really see, did. Because, I, I mean, where do you look? At least, in, in at a least, at like least it makes, hundreds of places to look. makes for a good story. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you're not going to get brain cancer from a cell phone uh, with your app when you use dousing rods. There's there's no electronic, there's no microwave radiation, you know. Well, you know, I, I've been using cell phones practically. You know me, Tom. I was always into technology. I was one of the first people you probably ever knew that had a cell phone, you know? Mm -hmm. I've been using cell phones longer than any all y'all out there. In fact, I did right. when we still had them in cars with a wire attached to the dashboard, <laughs> okay? Right? Uh, and uh, I don't know that I have a tumor yet. You know, so well, I use I'm them the, a lot. I I don't. I try to use a hands-free device when I I don't like to keep the phone near my head. Well, you know? I use I use headsets uh, because yeah. I can't even when I'm using it at home. You know, because I don't like they all get warm, right? You know, yeah, and yeah. I don't want to have that near my head. It's just uncomfortable. Yeah. But uh, maybe I do have a brain tumor. Maybe that's what's wrong with me. Maybe that's why I'm forgetting stuff. You know, I mean, I'm at that age, you know, where you just sit around going, what is it that's going to get me? So it could be the brain tumor from a cell phone, you know. But. Well, at, at any rate, uh, dousing works. You know, there's all these weird, you know, farmers from North Dakota who've been using dousing and they find water, you know, so there's got to be something to it. Uh, it was always considered a rural con job. <laughs> well, Am I right? Uh, uh, Tom's agreeing absolutely. with me, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a con job. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. guy, the guy would come over and you know he'd say, "I'm going to find water for you," and he has a little fork stick, right? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, nye, nye, nye. oh, oh, there's water down there. And, like, you know, if you <laughs> dig far enough, I suppose anywhere you're going to find water. <laughs> yeah, but keys, keys are another the, thing. The keys are another thing. Uh, no, I just look when I, 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 as I said the other night, I anytime I find that I've lost my keys, I look for them in the refrigerator. 
And the reason I looked for them in the refrigerator is there was this ad on TV once for Alzheimer's. And this husband, <laughs> his wife, woman says, I don't know where I left my keys, dear. And he goes looking around, he opens the refrigerator, and the keys are in the refrigerator. And he says, I think you need to go to see a doctor. And they find out she has Alzheimer's. And so mm -hmm. I figure if I ever leave my keys in the refrigerator, hey, you know, I'm going to be talking to the walls next. <laughs> you know, so. uh, yeah, age, age is a terrible thing to waste. That's why I make every joke I can about my age. But it is starting to bother me, you know, that, I, that there are certain things that I go, duh, you know. I, I have things here I do on a regular basis, and I forget how to do them. Yes, uh, Tom. Uh, so, yeah, you had a memory issue during the uh, Larry Bubbles Brown interview. It was Harvey Corman. Yes. Who was Hedley Lamar. Right. Hedley was, Lamar. Like, kind of territorial governor or something. Yes, yes. <laughs> Isn't that a fascinating story about Hedley Lamar? Yeah, I'm oh, she was a meth genius, I'm, right? I'm surprised that uh, that that Larry hadn't heard about it before because that was a big story. You were on CNET when that story broke. Well, no, that story, it, that uh, story did. I knew I've known that story for years and years before CNET. Uh, uh -huh. uh, it was a commonly known story among people who knew old movies and movie stars and so on, and what she had done during the war. Uh, right. In fact. Um, uh, it was, it, what's amazing about it is that what she and G George Ann Thiel, and he should get credit too, invented in this, in this uh, 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 frequency hopping uh, thing right. uh, was the basis for why your cell phone works. Now, mm -hmm. don't ask me what part of your cell phone does that, but it is important to the operation of a cell phone. It, you know. Well, it's the communication between the, the, the phone and the towers. Yeah. So as you move from one cell to a cell, you've got to establish another connection. Yes, I would say that's probably, power. you're probably right, that's the part of her invention. But if she had kept the patent on that, she would have been a multi-billionaire. Yeah. Because she'd get money on every cell phone that was sold. Of course, she yeah. died before the cell phones became big, but there were a lot of other things that used her, her uh, uh, scheme. Uh, radar, as an example. Um, so, you know, the, and, and the government did, took her invention, held on to it, didn't do anything with it until 1952, and that was about the time her patent uh, expired, and she didn't renew the patent. Mm -hmm. you, you can't really renew those things. Well, no, then you could every, was it 13 years in the old days, every 13 years up to 26 years? Uh, yeah, and then and, you had to have the money. And, and I don't think she even renewed it for the second 13. That wow. was the problem. And then long yeah. about 1980, 82, or 85, she tried to sue to get the patent back, but she couldn't, you know. Wow. The yeah. long past. Now patents are, I think, extended to the life of the inventor. Am I right about that, Jeff? No, 17 years. No, I don't. I think that's a thing of the past now. I think you can copyright an invention, and it stays copywritten for the the length of the life of the of the inventor plus a certain amount of years, like fifty years. So, anybody got a computer? Look it up. Look, find it out. Call me up if yeah, you know okay. the answer. Yeah. Okay. I'll do it right now. You know how long is a copyright? Just type in how long. A copyright is, or a patent? A, a patent. Excuse me. Patent. A patent. Okay. Okay. Copyrights, you don't even have to really copy. You don't even have to send away and get a copyright. You just say on your work, copyright, blah, 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 the year, and that will hold it forever. But uh, what what is, uh, what? Uh, by the way, we uh, it's a feel-free oh, night. Okay. 17 was the right one. It says U.S. Oh. patents with a filing date before June 8th, 1995 provide protection for up to 17 years, counting from the date of grant, the date given with reference numeral 45, or 20 years from the filing date, whichever expires later. However, the patent holder is required to pay maintenance fees to keep his patent valid. Okay, mm -hmm. now what happens after the patent runs out? He can't renew it? <clears throat> uh, 
It's now public domain. In other words, that's what happens to drugs then after 17 years, right? Yeah. Yeah, the problem with drugs is that it often takes five years, six years, seven years for what we call approval that it's an accepted, not just as a patent, but accepted that the drug is useful. By the way, Jeff, you were absolutely right. You know why I was wrong? I was thinking of copyrights. Yeah. yeah. Copyrights yeah, well, were like... Yeah, that, that's different. Look look, yeah. t look, and see how long a, a length of a copyright is. I, I think you'll find it's for the life of the, uh, of the author or the, uh, the creator. But that's what I was thinking of. And you are a, an inventor, so you should know about patents. I have probably, I don't know, 45 patents or something. Really? Mm. Really? Well, well, I, I never made any money on it. <laughs> That's besides the point. Oh, here you go. Pe uh, copyright. All works published in the United States yeah. before 1923 are in the public domain. Right. Works published after 1922, but before 1978, are protected for 95 years from the date of publication. If the work was created but not published before 78, the copyright lasts for the life of the author plus 70 years yeah okay that's it that was what i was thinking yeah. of yeah yeah so anything before what uh 1923 did you say yeah 23 you know it's okay, funny so that uh, means, because okay. everybody's well, putting I'm gonna out find every piece, I, I'm, I'm gonna videos, find i'm gonna find every piece of music i can find <laughs> to play on the show that's prior to 1923 and i've got some by the way anyway what mm -hmm. were you saying Oh, ha Harold Lloyd videos are out now, and they, they uh, are all over Facebook. You know, incredible videos like uh, Safety Last, yeah, right. you know, where he's hanging from the clock. Yeah, you know, right. amazing stunts for those days. And I think that's all in the oh, public domain the, because the, he the, made way, those in 1920. By the way, so. they, I've, I've seen how the clock was done. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, it's, it's, he wasn't, it's, it's he a wasn't, trick. But, he wasn't you know. hanging from a building. That clock was built on top of a roof. And then yeah. they shot in an angle that looked yes. like he was, you know, just suspended in midair. But it yeah. was as, the set was like if you had uh, 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 if you had the roof here, they built it up here. I mean, he could have fallen yeah. a little bit, but there were mattresses and stuff down there. And then they shot in an angle like this, so that all you see is all the traffic below and everything. Uh -huh. and, and you know something else, I didn't realize that. On his right hand, he blew off three fingers, including his yes. thumb. And he had to, in do, an that, he had to do that stunt with. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. What, I don't know what with, hand he's using in that. But uh, well, he had a glove. Yeah. You know that made him look like he had. But if you w look at a close up of the video, his uh, thumb doesn't move. He's holding on to the rope or the yeah. clock. And Does everybody know what we're out. talking about? Because it's kind of an iconic scene that they they always yeah. show. Of a guy hanging from a clock, okay, <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, he was a guy. He did the he did these stunts, but they weren't. It wasn't that they were dangerous, really, um, because they were all rigged. Uh, but he did them nonetheless. You know, people yeah. had to believe yeah. that Harold Lloyd was hanging from a clock that was on a building that was twenty stories high. Yeah. I, I was just reading where uh, the spectators that were below that were filmed, yeah. uh, Chaplin and Buster Keaton were extras in that crowd watching. Oh, really? Uh, you know. yeah. yeah, isn't that amazing? Yeah, well, it's not amazing. I think they all knew each other, or they yeah. had to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lloyd was, I think, num no, a, a, a Fatty Arbuckle, when he was alive, was number two to Chaplin. Wow, and, and then when he yeah. when the bit when he had that whole thing with the St. Francis Hotel in San Francisco, and yeah. <laughs> you know he got drummed out of the business for something he never did. Okay, uh, I think Keaton moved to number two, and Lloyd was number three. I may be wrong, yeah. but I think that was how it how it went. And oddly enough, Keaton was Arbuckle's uh, protege. Ah, yeah. Ah. So nobody was more saddened by it than, than Keaton. Uh, well, I'll tell you, I really get a bang looking at those videos now. I mean, you know, they're they're primitive by our standards today, but uh, there's nothing primitive you know, you look about at them. Yeah, you know, uh, it's it, just it, amazing. They're a perfect example of funny is funny. 
And, yeah. and my suggestion to anybody who wants to watch any of these films is don't watch them alone. If you can, watch them in a theater, <laughs> watch them in a theater with an audience. Because I, I watched something, um, uh, the one that he, he did, Steamboat Bill Jr., uh, I, I had seen that any number of times, you know, with the building coming down on top of him and him just standing there and where the door was. It, somehow he doesn't get hit by the building. Uh, that was done by having a build, uh, the front of that building built with a hinge. And they <laughs> knew exactly where it was going to fall unless that hinge broke and then it would have killed Keaton. But uh, yeah. anyway... I, I watched that film, God, I don't know how many times, and I enjoyed it. It's funny, yeah, whatever. Then I saw it at the San Francisco Silent Film Festival with an audience and an orchestra, and all of a sudden, there were laughs in that movie I didn't know were there, but the, with an audience, mm -hmm. experience the whole thing. They, there's a scene where he's taking hats on and putting them on, taking another one off, putting another one on, another one on, finally puts on one that's the Keaton hat, and he goes, nah, I don't want that either, and he throws that away. And when that happens, the whole audience broke out in just giant laughter and applauding. There's a, these films were made to be seen by an audience, not to be seen by you sitting and watching a television set. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. And, and they, if you, it, you know, I went and saw, I'll tell you, the, 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 the greatest film experience I ever had, and I think Tom knows about this, was I went to the Paramount Theater in San Francisco. My friend Shecky and I, we flew out especially for this. And while I was out here for this occasion, uh, I married my wife. Uh, we just decided, let's go up to Reno. Let's go up to Tahoe and get married. So, uh, but the reason we came to California was to go to the Paramount Theater, where they were having a showing of the full-length Napoleon, which is a French picture. The Napoleon happens to be five and a half hours. I oh. believe that's, that's the number <clears throat> I, I seem to remember, five and a half hours. And they did it with a complete symphony orchestra led by Carl Davis, who is the greatest writer of silent film scores alive. He's just wonderful. And he wrote an original score for the entire film. Mm -hmm. And we sat there, and they, they gave it, they did it in three parts. First part, then a second part. I think it was four and a half hours. And then finally a third part. Um, they had two uh, intermissions. You, no, they had three. They had two oh. intermissions, and then they had a dinner intermission. And uh -huh. we all went out to dinner, and everything came back and watched the rest of the film. And uh, at the end of that film, the screen opens up. And it's like what they did with Cinerama years earlier. It's three different projectors projecting wow. different a panorama hmm. uh, and also just separate things, too, at the same time. Uh, hmm. And it, 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 it just, I don't know, it took my breath away. I mean, it was yeah. primitive, but it just absolutely took my breath away. And what amazed me is in watching the, I don't know, I'm going to say, let's say five hours of this movie. God, I think it was five and a half. <laughs> but anyway, there wasn't one boring minute in the whole picture. Mm -hmm. Okay? It was a masterpiece. But if I mm. sat at home trying to gnaw on this thing, I don't think... I've tried to do it, and I couldn't. Mm. But sitting in a theater with a whole bunch of other people, and uh, nobody's going, I want to win dinner as I'm getting hungry. No, there was none of that. Everybody was just yeah. enthralled by what they were watching. Well, well, I think you've just identified the mystique of live theater, too. I mean, my wife and I love to attend live theater. I mean, we go up to Ashland, you know, to catch plays every year. And I, I think that's unparalleled. I, th I think cinema, television is fine. You know, it has its place. But the, I don't know. It's like the immediacy, the electricity, the, the fact that you're actually looking at live people do their thing, That you know. Well, Alex, you know this. I mean, I, I saw you at the comedy clubs, you know, and, uh, you know, there's nothing like seeing uh, a live comedic performance as opposed to seeing it on oh, TV Oh, I don't or know. Something. If it's a bad comedic performance, you'd wish you were in there. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, I've had that happen, too. 
yeah. <laughs> Apparently, you're not aware of a comedian named Perry Kurtz, but well, that's another story <laughs> all I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> But that Paramount Theater is a beautiful theater, too. Yes. I wish I had been able to go. But I, I wasn't able to, but I, I would really love to see something like that. Well, it was the only time that it was going to happen in the United States. And mm -hmm. it was the only time that Carl Davis's full score was going to be heard in the United States. The reason is that a guy by the name of Francis Ford Coppola, oh, yeah. years earlier, had grabbed uh, Napoleon and gotten the rights to show it in the United States. And he had his father, Carmine, mm -hmm. uh, create a score, which is just horrible, just <laughs> terrible. <laughs> and um, when they, uh, they wanted to do it here, Kevin Brownlow wanted to do it here. He's an art historian and restoration guy. Uh, he wanted to bring it back to the United States with the Carl Davis score. Carl Davis had scored it for showings in Europe. And uh, he, for years, he fought Coppola to get, mm. it, to get mm. it done. And finally, Coppola relented and allowed him to do one performance of it in, San, in, um, uh, in, in Oakland. And that was it. And then get the fuck out of the country with your score. And they can still show it in Europe. And I even have a copy of it with Carl Davis's score that's a European... Uh, um, a disc, but uh, uh, Coppola, you know, like it was just greedy about that film, and I, I just think that all you have to do is hear D Davis's score is just magnificent. It's just incredible. Uh, and when finally at the end, it's the big battle, and the, the big battle scene, uh, mm -hmm. the music, the live music. I mean, you got to realize when people went into movie theaters in the silent days. You think, oh, well, there they was a guy there in the front and he was playing a piano. Well, and that's not really true. That was true in Montana where, <laughs> the, where they had bicycled the prince to the end of the line, right? Uh, or an organ because it sounded kind of like an orchestra. But if you went to a silent film in New York at one of the big theaters, you had a full symphony-sized orchestra playing the score. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. and. And a lot of musicians got employed, by the way. It was a good thing. And um, then when sound came along, part of the reason why sound was invented, people get the idea that sound was invented because, oh, well, it wouldn't be wonderful to hear people talk. No, that's not the reason sound was invented. The reason sound was invented was because they wanted to have the same music in bumfuck uh, Montana that they mm -hmm. had in New York City. Mm -hmm. So they did the first what you call talky wasn't really a talky at all. The first Warner Brothers sound picture was Don Juan with John Barrymore, and it was music and sound effects, but it was mm -hmm. all on film, and, mm -hmm. or not on film. It was on a disc, and that mm -hmm. was their idea of why they wanted to invent it. And then all of a sudden, when they did the jazz singer, it was a silent movie until he sang the songs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm. And then all of a sudden, you've got Al Jolson singing the songs. And then it went back to being a silent film again. But at one point in the picture, he just, he ad-libbed before he started singing, hey, folks, you ain't heard nothing yet, which was his catchphrase. Mm -hmm. And, they, and, and uh, they said, wow, we could use this to have people talk. I swear to you, they never thought of <laughs> using sound for people to talk. Uh, well, and, how, did they, how did they sync it up? I mean, they they had pilot tone. No, uh, well, they they had it. They they it was a the the, ver, the version of sound. I mean, the, the the version of sound that they used, uh, Warner Brothers, was a very klutzy kind of. It, it went out pretty fast. Vitaphone mm. was a thing of the past, and they just called their pictures Vitaphone on any sound picture they did. But what it was, it was a disc, mm. and it was right next to the projector. And uh, by then you had amplification, uh, uh, thanks to uh, what's his name who invented the vacuum tube, uh, Marconi. Uh, no, um, yeah. uh, 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 DeForest, Lee DeForest, yeah, uh, and they could then you know amplify to an entire theater, and and they had this disc, and the disc was in synchronization with the projector. 
In other words, if the projector uh. slowed down a little bit, so did the disc. I mean, it, it was in sync with the disc. Um, they went through a lot of discs, though, I'll have to say that. Meanwhile, a few years earlier, there's a picture, and if you get it, it's one of the greatest films I've ever seen, by, done by Murnau, who did Nosferatu, and, uh, and, yeah. uh, and, and he did a picture called Sunrise in the United States. And the music is all on film, on the film itself. The fr mm. format that we started using where we had the, you know, the, the optical track going down the side of the film. Right. And if yeah. you find a copy of, of, of Sunrise today, that is the original musical track for the film. And uh, the idea was music. The idea wasn't, hey, these people can talk. Nobody, th mm -hmm. th that was not their intention. And then all of a sudden, at one point, uh, <coughs> Jocelyn ad libs another thing to his mother about we're going to move uptown and we're going to be there with the company, you know. And <coughs> all of a sudden, everybody went crazy. The talkies are here. Well, they only talked for <laughs> about a minute and a half in the whole film. Mm. But the talkies were here. That's, that's really fascinating. Yeah. 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 So, you know, and, and um, uh, I, it, one, once sound came in, you can't imagine that they didn't invent it for people to talk, but they consider film was considered the art of pantomime. Yeah. yeah. You know, it was pantomime and, and good music. All right. That's what you went to the theater for. They didn't think that, you know, gee, these people could talk, but there was a problem when they started talking. What do you think the problem was? Anybody want to guess? <laughs> Welcome to Alex Bennett's movie lecture. Uh, yes, Would uh, it be, uh, 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 related to the plot of Singing in the Rain. No, but uh, a lot of that was true. But oh. um, uh, I would think the big problem that they had was syncing, well, uh, syncing the sound and the video. Together. Yeah. Now I forgot what I was going to tell you was the biggest problem. Oh. Of sound. Oh yeah, the biggest sound when they would problem when they went to sound was and, and a little bit of is shown in singing in the rain but it doesn't they don't make a big deal out of it the camp cameras were so loud they had to, uh, put, they had to yeah. put them in booths so, and and pad them a few years later somebody created a self a self what they called a self blimped camera yeah and it, it had padding in it to prevent you from hearing the problems with the with the, with the audio hold on a second let me there we go there. Just got him back. Okay, um, for Tom, who maybe didn't get that, <laughs> uh, the, the uh, they had self blimp cameras a few years later, but at that point they had to be in a booth. Yeah, yeah. So you had no movement with the camera. So every scene was like very static. So where movies up at, yeah. uh, up to the end of the silence had suddenly become very very sophisticated when it came to movement, especially the Germans were great at having a moving camera. They would put cameras on ropes swinging back and forth to get certain effects. and uh, mm -hmm. So you really had movement in movies. That's why they called them movies. But now they were yeah. kind of stillies because everybody was just had to sit still. And then on top of that, and that was Singing in the Rain had the same problem. Mm -hmm. Where to put the microphone? These microphones <laughs> weren't as sensitive as the microphones are today where you have a boom mic and it can hear people, you know wherever it's aimed. Uh, so they were having to like put they put it in telephones or behind <laughs> books or whatever. Yeah. And people were always kind of talking into them. So mm -hmm. the sound created a whole bunch of artistic problems. But as a few years went on, the technology came into play. And, you know, they got self blimp cameras and things like that. So cameras then were able to move. Only did they then come out with three color Technicolor, and I don't know if you ever saw the three color Technicolor cameras because they had to run three reels of film at the same time, but they oh, were yeah. fucking huge. Yeah, well, you know. So I mean, every technology creates a new problem, and now of course I'm doing videos with my little GoPro that does better quality <laughs> than they could ever get back in those days of movie making. I know it's weird. Yeah, weird. Yeah. Well, one of one of my favorite silent era films uh, was actually shot uh, at, right after World War One. There was a famous French cinematographer with a Pathé camera, and he flew in a plane over all the 
devastation of France, you know, that was bombed out. Well, there's a lot and, of that, yeah. Oh, yeah. amazing shots, you know, that uh, you just ha get a, you begin to get a scope of how vast the battlefields were in uh, France and Belgium. And, you know, this guy, that's how he made his fame. He, uh, you know, shot all this aerial footage and, uh, you know, just kind of open your eyes up to, uh, you know, that aspect of the war. Well, that's the grimmest war we ever had, World War II. Yeah, that yeah. Was a, that was, yeah. By the way, uh, we'd like to get, we'd love to get more people calling. Renee, where are you? Come to the rescue. Phil isn't oh. here. You can get a word in edgewise. Come on. Yeah, I, I was joking around with Renee. I don't know what she, oh, she left. Oh really? I don't know what happened to her. Yeah, uh, she's. I guess she's gotten bored or something. You know, <laughs> or she's communing with paradise. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, no, All right. Uh, and Ray's out directing a play, so that's why we don't have him for a couple of weeks. You know. Oh, so. yeah. oh yeah, his play. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I've kind of been doing media stuff, editing film. I just finished a live shoot. and uh, Hey, Alex, I bought a new toy. What? Uh, a hardware encoder. You know, a live view hardware encoder. The the best one, uh, the uh, uh, well, live view LU600, cost 25 grand. You know, but this one, they, they make an entry level one that's uh, Three under two. Uh, oh, under two. Well, why did you get a hardware yeah. encoder? Uh, you know, because I, I get too many blips and problems with uh, software encoders like never, OBS or oh, Wirecast. I, I never have any problem with those. Well, I'm shooting stuff that lasts all day, you know, eight, ten hours. And I think gear gets hot. And, uh, you know, I, I just, uh, you know, have to go back to hardware. I use a hardware switcher. You know, I have Wirecast that can do multicam switching. People but, don't know what we're talking yeah. about, so we're probably boring the shit out of them. <laughs> but OBS is what I use here to switch this show. Oh, OBS so. is fantastic. Yeah. 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 It's a great piece of work, and it's free. Absolutely free. And and yeah. uh, I look and see what these other companies think, say they can do, you know, and they don't come close to OBS. Because yeah, I could agree with you. And then, you know, you look at who's the biggest user of OBS. It's Twitch. It's gamers. And they're on for hours. You know, if you've watched their you watch their shows, yeah, I'll tell like, you something. This is, this is this is a whole world that most of our audience doesn't know about. Tom probably doesn't know about it. I'm yeah. sure Jeff doesn't. And that no, is these, people, these people who are yeah. online playing games, video, video games. games. Yeah. Now, and I was I was I got the last uh, Tomb Raider, for instance, as an example. And so I wanted to know how I get around certain things. So I, this is one guy that does these things. He had like 30 hours of Tomb Raider up there of him going through the entire game. And here's how we get past this. And if you jump over that, you get to this. You know, it wasn't that I was cheating exactly, but I wasn't, I, I didn't have to spend hours just trying to figure a few things out uh, because you still got to do it. You still got to move your fingers around. And, um, I really loved it. I just, you know, I sat there. Sometimes I wouldn't even play the game. I would just sit there watching him play it. And there's a whole audience for this. And they have conventions yeah, yeah. where people go and watch these people play these games. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, well, they have competitions. Yeah. You know, and, and a big one is sports videos, like uh, virtual uh, basketball games, virtual football games, virtual baseball games. Uh, you know, and so they compete against each other and, uh, you know, have turned it into, a, uh, you know, kind of an online sport thing, you know, so they have a lot of people looking at that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, 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 it um, it's, it's quite a, it has quite a fan base. Some of these people, this one guy, oh, yeah. this one guy yeah. did the Tomb Raider stuff. Hell, he had like a, a total of a million viewers or something. <laughs> Yeah. I know. Well, yeah. <laughs> be, because he he also had another aspect to what he was doing is he would play the game and then he would go he would say things of excitement and so on that he, like he was really getting into the game you know and oh watch out oh I got to watch out for that ball oh that was a good one. you know <laughs> and you and he so he be, they they become great performers too you know so <laughs> 
it's a whole uh, it's a whole subset of the internet that a lot of these people don't know what we're talking about. And when you're talking about things like OBS and wire, uh, what is it, Wirecast, Wirecast, and, yeah. all these things really sell themselves more as a thing for gamers to use. Yeah. In yeah. order to uh, show people how they how they play these particular games. Of course, this guy was cheating a little bit every now and then when he really fucked up. He edited. But, you know, I mean, or couldn't figure it out. He would, like, you know, cut. And then all of a sudden he's jumped to something else. And I missed out on a little bit of it. And then I couldn't figure out how to get past a certain point. It was, But that's a big, that's a big business now. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, the other, uh, uh, nobody else is going to call tonight? God, where's Kevin? I don't know. Where's Kevin tonight? I wish I had the time to go to NAB. It starts uh, on the 9th and That's goes the national, through the weekend in Las Vegas. Association of uh, Broadcasters. Broadcasters, yeah. yes. Uh, and uh, they, they hold a convention every year. And they, you're going for the technical part of it, right? Yeah. Well, I can't. I, you know, I, I just have too many commitments right. here, but I'd love to go. Yeah. yeah I just to, can't squeak it away. I used to go to what's, uh, what's the one they have earlier in the year, uh, around uh, New Year, uh, the uh, Consumer Electronics Show, CES. Yeah, that one. Yeah, right. And, and then there's streaming media. You I know, there's, a, uh, streaming media is in New York now in Manhattan. I, I have a, uh, a video here. Uh, me doing one of my things that I did for Log On TV at the CES in what year would this have to be? Uh, psh, oh boy, 90. huh? Ninety. Late nineties. Is it late nineties? Maybe ninety five. This one I have. I'd have to go. I should go out and look at Miami. It will tell me what <laughs> year it was. Um, and. Uh, I have like one where I'm talking about this new thing. This is the rage, folks. It's called DVDs. <laughs> no longer things on tape. They're on a disc this size. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? And look at the picture. <laughs> and I'm going, wow. Gee, I've seen, been there, done that. And when I did all these things for a log on, it was like I'm in front of a TV set and I'm, I'm using a dial-up modem practically to get online, you know. <laughs> Things like that, but um, it was the beginning of the wonderful world, and now we're finding out that it is um, a real problem. Uh, in fact, we've got we've got uh, Zuckerberg, uh, the guy who owns a hospital, uh, who uh, who uh, is going to be speaking in front of a congressional committee when on the four when when they say the fourteenth something like that. I can't remember now. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I just saw the headline. I, I lost it. Their stock uh, is supposedly dumped just precipitously. Yeah, yeah. They've lost like twenty-eight billion in in uh, in uh, what do you call it? The ca ca capital or whatever it's called. Stock evaluation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's the least trusted uh, social network now. You know, among I, users. I, my yeah. question is whether that is truly deserved. Um, can they, can any of them be trusted, you know, or, yeah, or, did, right. or did oh, Facebook just get used <laughs> by somebody who got found out, you know, I mean, it, it, uh, this company, uh, what was it, uh, what's the name of it? Uh, the one in England, uh, that was doing the research for Trump. Well, analytica. Um, uh, analytica. Uh, uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Cambridge, 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 Cambridge analytica. analytica. Cambridge Analytica, if they had decided to use YouTube or to use Twitter, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, they then those companies would be in the in the hot seat. Um, so I don't know that because they targeted Facebook, they targeted a vulnerability in Facebook that Facebook, quite frankly, probably didn't think was a vulnerability. And. Uh, also, these companies, these newer companies, always wind up at a point, and I mentioned this the other night, where they run into real trouble because they don't understand how big they've gotten. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh, when they don't understand how big they've gotten, uh, they tend to think, oh, well, they don't look at these holes or how it can be breached or how it can be used or how it can, you know. 
whatever. I think Facebook was probably the one to use because they collect the most information because you type in, you know, where you're from and how you make a living and who your girlfriend is and, you know, you've yeah. got friends. And so those friends Yeah, they have tap friends. into your friends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, t uh, Twitter, not so much. You know, Twitter isn't as verbose in information. And YouTube, quite frankly, I don't think YouTube has much information on me. They just have all these shows, you know. Right. Uh, but they don't have that much more information on me. Uh, so come on over, folks, and uh, subscribe to my channel because uh, it's safe. You know, <laughs> it's like it's like doing the Internet with a condom. Yeah. Okay. Hey, that's the girl that shot up the YouTube headquarters and killed herself uh, yesterday, I think. Well, uh, she was uh, pissed off at YouTube because they were downgrading her videos or, or censoring them or something. Uh, uh, apparently something. Uh, I don't know if you saw her videos, but she was kind of a whack job. You know? No, I, I didn't see her videos. <laughs> so she probably was very famous. I mean, I don't know, know whether people, uh, she probably got a lot of viewers. I go look to see if she had any, but they probably taken her account down by now. Yeah, they probably washed it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, here's the thing: CNN is in a great deal of trouble with social media and with the public. And this is during the whole Me Too thing going on, right? They say yesterday in the news that it was a woman shooter. And how often mm -hmm. do we have a woman shooter? And then they said, there's a rumor she, it was, it was a, um, uh, a love triangle thing, and she was out to get her boyfriend. They figure that the only way, okay, are we losing you, Jeff? Where's no, 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 oh, I'm just oh, uh, moving around. They said, um, um, they said uh, uh, it, it was a, it was a tr you know, a, a, a uh, lovers quarrel or whatever and she was went in there th that's what the rumor was huh well what drove everybody nuts was it had nothing to do with it and the, they they yeah. could only surmise that the real reason that any woman would go in and shoot up a place is because her boyfriend was in there yeah. and that that was a sexist uh, idea of why a woman would suddenly be a shooter I don't um, think CNN was the only one that, uh, that I think I heard doing. MSNBC do it too yeah, that uh, that they were that was one of the things that they were looking into as a possibility. That it was, it was a it was a domestic quarrel or something like that. Yeah. But then, as more information came out, it's just like anything else. When when, when you have a, a, a event like that, lots of misinformation gets out, and there are people that intentionally put out misinformation. Like uh, there was a there was attempt to to make it look like she was a Muslim. I mean, that's usually the first thing they try to do is they, 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 they say, "Oh, it was a Muslim." She had a headscarf, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, uh, Jeff. I'm always amazed that nobody on TV will ever say these words. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's here's in, in a situation like what happened yesterday. Here's the part that gets me. They go hour after hour after hour on this story with only maybe three pieces of information. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they just, the, the three pieces of information they keep repeating over and over again, and they keep trying new ways of saying the three pieces of information. We know it was a woman. We know five people were shot, and she used a right. pistol. Beyond that, they have no more information, but they're trying to pretend like they do. And they don't, they don't want to say, look, we're going to go to other news and we'll come back when this story develops, when the story has changed. Yeah. 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 But I, that's not the way cable TV news works. Well, that's right. It's totally different than, than when newspapers used to come out mm -hmm. because the newspaper would only come out typically once, once a day uh, unless it was incredibly important. Yeah, uh, a change and people knew something, but uh, this, uh, I was listening about that with that a woman and and uh, the people who were shot and all of that and 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 
it just kept going on and on and on. And I, I turned it off and went to another station. And then I came back later. <laughs> like you say, Alex, the same story was going over and over and over yes. with no other information. Right, right. Uh, I turned off cable TV news in 2009. And except for occasions where I've been somewhere and somebody else is watching, I have not watched. I don't watch well, any more cable you TV. You know, news. after the election, a big waste. After the election, for about three quarters of a year, we didn't watch any TV news. We just wow. completely yeah. stopped yeah. watching it. Uh, and I didn't feel we were missing anything. As a matter of fact, the information I was getting, I was getting every night from you guys. You yeah. Know? <laughs> or my watch. My watch was coming up with headlines and so on. Um, mm -hmm. You know, but I didn't have to, and I'm, I'm getting bored with it again because you tune in any of these shows, and I don't care how good or bad they are. It goes something like this. Opening story, blah, blah, blah. Here's the story. Let's go to our field reporter. She's got more of the story. Blah, 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 blah. Now we're back in the studio, and now we have our panel here, and now we go to three people who are going to, mm -hmm. or anywhere from one to three people who are going to, Take that story and dissect it, and then we get to another story. They boot them out the door. They go to another reporter to report the bit. You come back to the studio. There are now another one to three people there who are going to discuss <laughs> it. This goes on endlessly, and nothing ever gets accomplished. John John Stewart, when he, on the Daily Show a number of years ago, did a wonderful takeoff on that. You know where they were saying, "Oh, well, we're going to leave. We have to leave it there, and go off." You know, and they're in the middle of this big argument, and then finally Stewart says, "No, don't leave it there." <laughs> it was just, you know, right. It's just very, very frustrating that the way that the way this this it's just these people just yelling at each other. Yeah, and you don't learn anything. Right. You know. Yes, uh, yes uh, John. Yeah, well, that um, I want to bring it back to Clayton Douglas. I mean, that's Clayton Douglas' uh, film uh, and interview that you did, Alex. Yeah. This is where the value of shows like this come in, you, you know, where we're regular people and we're uh, uh, doing the, the in-depth thing about these events. And what you did, bringing uh, Clayton Douglas on the show yeah. to kind of, flush out the 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 behind the scenes the the in-depth thing about why people do extreme acts i mean this this uh is the venue uh, th this uh, gabnet and and youtube where we could present these kind of things this is our forum you know yeah. this is our chance to do it i think that was one of the best damn uh internet shows i've ever seen was at clayton douglas show that you ran well uh, you know i mean uh, um w what it is is that I, I have the same three people here discussing a subject the only thing is you guys don't know shit uh and <laughs> and, and, and and you're all willing to admit it okay that's and right so, so we sit here trying to dissect the news from a more rational standpoint except when phil's here uh, uh from a more rational standpoint um and a more humane standpoint, I mean, it's what America thinks, I feel, on this program. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, yeah. it's Amer And I think the news is, you know, it, it, Trump loves to go after the news. And I don't say that he doesn't have a case, actually. I you know? agree. I mean, in that, it, I don't call it fake news. I don't think that's what it is at all. I think it's ginned up news. I think it's news meant to sell beer and product, you know, but it's not news to inform people, and that's the problem. See? Yes, Tom? I think it's politicized news, and it's very shallow, and uh, basically it's it's very centered on the U.S. It's, yeah. It, it lo very lacks a, a, an international perspective. You basically have someone from the Democratic Party yelling against somebody against the Republican Party. And that happens on all all these cable networks, whether it be MSNBC, CNN, Fox. They all basically are running the same formula, but right. they each one has their own particular, you know, political bias when they do it. 
but it's all very shallow. I mean, this, to, to me, the nice thing about this panel is, yes, a lot of times we talk about things we don't know of, but also we're, we're, this is a, where we can also talk from our own personal experience. So you can, you can uh, uh, debate or argue my political uh, opinions, but you can't debate my personal experience. You know, that's no. the one thing that no. I can bring, everyone can bring, is personal experience mm -hmm. that we could all under, begin to understand and, and gain empathy for. Well, that, that personal experience is what, in, in many respects, defines us. Uh, and, um, and, we bring, and people do bring that to this program. Except tonight, there are just three of you. But sometimes they're, <laughs> you know, it's a l very lively conversation. I feel when it gets over nine, it gets unwieldy, but, you know... Mm -hmm. Uh, it's harder for me to keep track of. This is an, oddly enough, this is, even though I have to keep the ball rolling, this is an easier show for me to do than when I got eight people and I've got it like, oh, mm -hmm. Phil, you got your hand up. <laughs> yeah, so, right. so you got your hand up, you know. Uh, yeah, hey, uh, this from uh, Reuters, this came in from one of my uh, streaming media blogs. Reuters Institute reports that nearly 60% of 18 to 34-year-olds use online resources as their main source of news. And in an era of fake news, live content seems to be the only dependable medium left. That's from Reuters. Live content? Yeah. I don't, I don't know that, it, uh, to begin with, I don't look upon the Internet as being dependable. I think it is uh, a vestering, I use this term once to describe television, actually, a festering pocket of misinformation. Uh, it And it is. Uh, because I don't believe anything I read on the Internet. Just because somebody wants... Nobody's getting vetted. You well, know. Th this is about live broadcasts like this. This is a live broadcast. Yeah, but, but you know, you know let, let's say let, Phil isn't here tonight, but I can talk about him. Uh, <laughs> you know, okay. he'd talk about me if I wasn't here. Uh, uh, Phil says things that, that are wrong. Okay? Somebody who wants to justify their opinion is going to then tell a friend the next day, well, I was watching a live show on the Internet last night, and one of the people said, blah, blah, blah. Did you know that to be true? You know, in other words, all of a sudden, because it's on what they, you see, they can't tell the difference, believe it or not. They can't tell the difference between television and this show. Because this show looks like a television show, or the kind of television show. And because it's coming, maybe they're watching it on a big screen somewhere instead of just on their little computer. Or maybe they watch everything on their computer, including television. But it all gets to be in this big mishmash and, and this big homogenized uh, uh, situation in which um, uh, all of this uh, uh, becomes, you can't tell the real from the fake. Okay. Uh, and so, well, I, you know, there were people, yeah, they said, yeah. who, what do you think? They said to some people, what do you think is the best news show on television? He said, uh, The Daily Show. Well, The Daily Show is not, it yeah. was not a news show, yeah. you know, but they perceived well, it as one. You know, the difference between the news and the people that pump out information and us mm -hmm. is that we don't have an agenda. You know, we're just uh, four guys having a conversation and we're not trying to promote any particular well, I, product I, I, I have or, an, I, or I, no no i have an agenda philosophy i have an agenda is he well, over, what's your it's, agenda is he overthrow the american uh, po political system uh <laughs> i want to overthrow america uh i i i don't know what i want to replace it with but neither does trump so you know it doesn't matter oh oh alex hey uh, tim is called ladies and gentlemen what's your yeah. we'll get to your conspiracy in a moment but first <laughs> go ahead tim I was just going to say, you very seldom make it to the third party. What? You know, you've been to a lot of... Uh, we were talking about third party politics, right? Yeah. Okay. Just remember, the party told you to reject all evidence of your eyes and ears. It was their final and most essential command. Was it? What's that a quote from? I have no idea. 1984? Uh, 1984, yeah. No. Yeah, I thought so, yeah, all right. And with Sinclair taking over the local stations, where people pretty much live with these anchors, they that's probably <laughs> the most trusted source for a lot of people. That's 
Much scarier than Fox News. They consider local news to be the most most trusted source. I don't know why, because I never watch it. I don't want to watch about. I don't want to yeah. see a story about a house burning down or a you know a dog up yeah. a, tr- a cat up a tree or something some wa- something warm and fuzzy, uh, you know. But that newscast, those local newscasts, are the most watched news if uh, on television. But television is getting to be less of a medium for news. Period. Mm. Uh, uh, I mean, m- m- uh, most people are saying that they're they're actually using the internet to to find stuff, you know. So, what are you going to say? Um, well, that's why the lady shot up YouTube because she thought they were censoring her too much. That's right. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, here's where that's where, where she was really wrong was, uh, you know, YouTube is the I for my money the best of all these outfits. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, and I don't have the, the greatest love in the world for Google, but I will have to say that having done business with Facebook, I'm no longer using Facebook, and Twitter completely baffles me because I like the art of conversation. And uh, uh, I find that YouTube really runs a great business, you know. And mm-hmm. I, I, But they started filtering much more, and they took people's means of income away. The, and they're, they're making pol- policy decisions uh, social decisions that affected a lot of people's income that had established good YouTube channels. Well, so they've become well, their first own First of all, first system. of all, fuck those people because YouTube never created YouTube as a method of these people earning a living. The fact that they found a way to do it, okay, right, is 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 their fault. But I got news for you. Anytime you rely on somebody else to be the basis for your income, then you're at their beck and call. Okay, and well, that's why you're in a capitalist society you need regulations and you need no, but you don't need regulation. See, in this particular case, I don't think you need regulations. What you need is somebody to say, "Well, I got a better idea than than YouTube. I'm going to come up with a better way of doing." Then then why is Zuckerberg coming in to talk to a? A committee. You, you heard because what he's from, trying to save his fuck. Was. He's trying to save his fucking business because it's tanking. <laughs> now they said there was billions of records accessed, not just the fifty million. Uh, right? that, uh, that no, 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 no. Wow. Cambridge said, uh, Analytica said they only did, tw- I think, twenty million, and Zuckerberg and Facebook said it was more like seventy-eight million. So actually, they were saying it was more than Cambridge Analytica said it was. Right. Right. It was it's so almost as if, it's as if Emron and um, um, Torch. You see, I mean, I don't and, look. Uh, I look I, to begin with. How am I going to be mad at Facebook? It was started by a bunch of kids, right? And and Zuckerberg well, was just a kid. And you know, I'm expecting them to suddenly, in 15 years, become uh, business-wise, become terribly mature. Come on, that's well, ridiculous. Well, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I look at the, as at YouTube as a library, and mm-hmm. when you have libraries, once you start burning books, like in Fahrenheit four fifty one, you know the power elite maintain their no, control but, 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 uh, I think, by controlling I, the flow of knowledge, I think YouTube, and that's been that way for centuries. YouTube has every right to say, "Hey, I don't want you on my system," uh, mm-hmm. you know, because they did not start it as some kind of a government. Uh, a mandate that people run videos on the internet, and here are the reasons you do it. You know, uh, right? But, uh, but it's a it's a monopoly. Once it becomes a monopoly, no, it's only it has it, obligations. It, it, but it's not a monopoly. No, I can name five other streaming services that do video. Mm-hmm. You know, I like I, the one I, I mentioned. Have, I have two of them. <laughs> right, I have two of them right now. I use uh, well, I use three of them actually. I use Facebook. I use YouTube. I use a, a live stream. Uh, and I oh I use iTunes. Okay, I'm just thinking of my kids' generation. They're just pretty much YouTube. Everything. Well, that, that's a, that's that's because YouTube has captured their imagination, and because there's right. a richer, fuller right. playing field there. But They've the established point, a market. The point I'm right. making is, you don't think Facebook started Facebook Live because they wanted to compete against YouTube, and they actually have more people on Facebook than YouTube has. Do you know my right. audience has gone down watching videos because I, I left Facebook? But I left it for a good reason because I don't think they had a good service there. It was always going right. down and having problems. And I, I was afraid I was going to sneeze wrong and they were going to be upset by that. You know, 
I find that YouTube is pretty lenient, believe it or not. You know, I mean, uh, when I used to, pl if I played a, a song here on the show, uh, I would right. suddenly, after the sh uh, while the song was playing, my feed would dump, would go down. And it was right. because I pay played something that I didn't have the rights to play. <laughs> If I do the same thing on YouTube, after it's all over, they say, well, you played something you shouldn't have played, and uh, we're going to have to run a commercial before you're, before you're, uh, you're f you can't use it to make money, and we're going to generate some income for the people whose copyright you used, all right? Uh, but they don't, but they don't suddenly yeah. become dogmatic and just cut me off. And, and I got right. one once where they said, well, you, you know, you can't be shown in the following countries because you played this song, and it was every every country but Zaire, I think. So, you know, <laughs> I I immediately cut the song out of the show and resubmitted it. But, you know. Yeah, they're pretty, but, pretty sophisticated now. No, but they are much more reasonable and try and come out with an answer that doesn't mean you can't do what you do. It's just, I, you know, they say, hey, you played a song that's copywritten. You cannot monetize this show. However, we can run a commercial beforehand if we choose to for the advertiser, you know, for the uh, music publisher or whatever to gain some revenue from. Uh, I, I, I like what you're saying, Alex. I'm never going to make money out of this anyway. I don't care. Don't, Go ahead. Don't be careful. Just be careful. You're not being a sycophant. Because we're on YouTube. No, so I'm not. Talk no, about no. I, you know something? I The last thing I wanted to do was YouTube. There's this guy we have who's a constant listener to this program, Forbin Colossus. You've seen him on the on the chat yes. line. Yeah, yes, I've seen him. Yeah. Uh, Forbin kept writing me, you should leave Facebook. You should go to YouTube, blah, 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 blah. And finally, I started having so many problems with Facebook, I decided to do YouTube for a week and was so, even though the numbers of people that I got as a result of it because I didn't have a, as many subscribers. Whereas on Facebook, I got, five, I got like maybe 1,500, 2,000 subscribers right. Right. Uh, or people following me who all get a message when I'm on the air. I find that here I, it only goes out to the maybe 600 people that I've got as subscribers. And mm -hmm. so I get less of an audience. But I'll tell you, the quality of the picture. The fact that it doesn't go down on me, just like every woman mm -hmm. I ever knew, uh, is is just absolutely uh, uh, sounding. And I stuck with YouTube because I like it over over Facebook. Yes, Tom. Yeah, I get. Uh, I turned on the function that uh, that allows me to get a uh, uh, get a notification when when you come on the air. I it sent me an email. I click the link, and I'm right there on YouTube. Right. So uh, I would just encourage anyone listening, if you, if you, if you, I think it's there's a little bell or something on, on underneath the uh, the the uh, the picture. Yeah. Just click that on, and uh, if you're, you know, if you're if you if you have a if your uh, account is linked to your email address, you will get that notification. Well, let me also mention to people that if you are not a subscriber to my channel, please just click subscribe for me it's it's there uh mm -hmm. and, and yeah but also the thing is you can take the the what i love about youtube is you can actually take that page that we're on right now and make it a tab on your browser that's always there and when it's time to go on the air just go over there and just wait it starts up the show starts up automatically on that uh on that page and uh, you know I can I have it on live on my Facebook page on my uh, my Gabnet page, I mean it's things like that that have made me like it so much. It hasn't had to do with me being a sycophant Tim, and and wanting to. <laughs> no, no, keep... I'm just I'm just I'm kidding. I I know that. I think no, I think they they created a great business model here for themselves. You know, and they're and and they care about me as a uh, as a user of it. And that I, you know, that I get a, I get a decent picture going out. This show They're never looked. Plugged, this then. show never looked as good on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Never, you know. It makes you guys all look better. In fact, you're not as blurry as you used to be, and pretty soon you're going to have to go out and buy makeup, and <laughs> you know. So you've gone from AM to FM HD. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. For an audio <laughs> equivalent, yeah. I mean, but, you know, and I think YouTube uh, does a phenomenal job. And 
So I, I, but I don't know what this woman's problem was. As she was, she did not look like she had everything going for her, you know. <laughs> and and uh, she was playing the part just like Roseanne. If somebody, if I, the if, of, if I knew her, well, if I knew her, uh, and somebody said to me, "Do you know anybody that's nuts enough to go in somewhere and shoot some place up?" I'd point to her. Okay, I mean, you could just see it. Um, mm. Well, she's still well, American, the, trying to be a Korean pop star. I think. Well, well, we, what we might find out is that she did have quite a following on YouTube. Because she's so she wacky. She did have quite a following, and they 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 gave they fixed it so her she wouldn't come up in searches as much. They really shut down her viewership. Well, she may and have no wait a minute. That may have been her perception of it. You know, that's possible. You know, because but, uh, usually the if, they, if, if, they're gonna, if, if they're going to do something like that, no, it's not necessarily credible. Uh, I don't think. Well, it I is. think the bad part is if they're going to do have, if they're going to do something like that, they're going to inform you that they're doing it, and they. Probably there's no, no sense that she was notified. This right. may have been in her mind that she wasn't getting, you know, the the juice that she should have. It could have, have, it could have been getting. a competitor that hacked in. No, 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 no. You're getting close to having your only conspiracy theory of the night. Okay, well, here, let me go to the fight. Here's the more important one. I think the sad thing is the the lesson to learn is. We have Trump in the White House, and he badmouths everybody. And if, if you're bad, you can go after those people, like at the Pizzagate thing. And now you had an NRA. Wait, uh, this, uh, you're really not, you're put, not making any sense at all now, Tim. But Pardon? You're not making any sense. No, I'm talking about the hate talk that we're getting from the White House. The NRA yeah, was doing you're, hate but talk. But you're, changing, you're changing subjects. We're talking about her and, and how the real story here is, is that she was probably – not an internet phenomenon, but she got she had whatever sense of fame that she could possibly no, I, muster. I, I'm not saying there's a drunk link, well, but there's well, an let me, let me, let me, we can let go me, after bad May people. I finish what I'm saying, Tim? That this real story here is almost a dystopian story like you would do in a movie about somebody who becomes so popular on the internet that all of a sudden they don't feel they're as popular as they once were, and they go to extraordinary means to keep that popularity. I think that's the story here. Is somebody? I You're correct. Yep. Is somebody who perhaps had? I would imagine she had a much larger audience than I do right now. Now, isn't that pathetic? <laughs> okay, what does that say about our society? It probably says they have taste because they won't watch me. But the point is, <laughs> the point is, uh, she got. Look, I bet she. I bet you. I looked at her. I bet you she had at least five thousand people looking on. I wish I had been able to get to her her stuff before they took it down because I'm sure it's not up anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll bet she had like you know maybe five thousand, ten thousand people could be you know watching her videos with her and her leopard skin uh, you know uh, outfit with her big hooters, right? That's that's enough to get you five thousand right there on YouTube, uh, and, and the wild hair, acts, the wild hair. What? You know, she, she acts like she was headed toward a breakdown, probably. Well, yeah. Her but, her uh, family had warned the police uh, to that effect in some way. I'm not sure exactly what they said, but the police, the the report that came through. I was listening to KCBS AM radio today, and they said that uh, the police said that they didn't have enough to act on that information. Yeah. So. Well, you know, um, the, the, it's always woulda, coulda, shoulda after one of these things happen anyway. Yeah. You know, oh, the cops called, somebody called the cops once on her. Oh, really? And they didn't do anything about it. Well. I, a, a, good, a good question would be how many calls like, do that, <clears throat> like that do they get? Yeah. That would be interesting. Uh, and how many, how many can they actually follow up on it? That would just be interesting to know how many they got. Yeah. Yeah, but, um, wow. uh, but uh, you know, I think it's an interesting, I think there's an interesting, deeper story here that needs to be investigated into the, 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 the what could we call it, the seduction of fame, but not real fame, the fleeting, most fleeting form of fame, which is being an internet star, okay? And I think that's what, I think that's what, what happened here. Would you not say that? Would you not agree with me, Tom? That maybe this is the bigger story. 
Possibly, yeah. I was just thinking of, of different parallels. I mean, when you think of uh, when you do the Andy Warhol's uh, superstars, uh, you know, these are just people that he just picked out of nowhere. And when they were suddenly got all this attention, many of them didn't know even how to handle it. One of them yeah. jumped out a window and killed themselves. Another one <laughs> tried to kill him. Right. Yeah. Yes. Hello, Jack. Hello there, Alex. I want to take exception to something that you just said. What? I allow Tim to have at least two or three conspiracy theories every night. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I got up the pie one night, right, Jack? Yeah. <laughs> I got up the pie. And I never got my pie either. Oh. Check on that. Well, we'll send you one. Uh, yeah. I, I, I will send you a Texas pecan <clears throat> pie, which has enough That's... sugar to give anybody diabetes. I was talking about this. Uh, as an example what I'm talking about, I was talking about this kid down at uh, Parkland, uh, down at the the high school, what's his name? What are you talking about, David Hogg? D David Hogg. David Hogg. Yes. That, in a way, he seems to be slowly getting seduced by the limelight. You yeah. Know? And uh, not that you know, not that it's not for a good cause, but that he just seems like he, if if he went a day without having some major network call him, he would start getting a Jones on it. You know. And, well, and, you, you've had power, right, Alex? You know that feeling, right? When you're on top of your game and you're uh, in touch uh, with uh, all the uh, people uh, toward the top. When exactly was uh, that in my career? Uh, well, you, you got to go to a lot of good parties. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's when and then when that li when that light disappears, when the limelight disappears. You know, it, some people like this woman can go nuts. You know, right. when she well, felt, when she felt, when she, he has to have constant, constant. Does everything Trump. have to come back to Trump? Well, until we get rid of him, yeah, he's ruining my life over here. Well, how's he ruined your life so far? Well, well, the, the company that Pruitt gave the permit to is the one that polluted our river in Kalamazoo. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, that's it. That's one too many conspiracy theories right okay. there. Okay. Yeah. No, that's a fact, not a theory. Yeah, that's a fact. That's, yeah that, uh, Tim's right. That is a fact. <laughs> that's not a and, then and then you're using uh, clean water money to give his people a raise over top my, of the my wall. My wallet know. is about three thousand dollars lighter because of this son of a bitch. Okay, but you know we we have we have a city of Flint that doesn't get clean water still. Yeah, but that started and back we, in the Obama days. Right, but Trump said he'd fix it, and he didn't do nothing. Well, Obama, <laughs> Obama said he'd fix it, too. And now they're using the money to give Pruitt's... Wait a minute. Uh, Obama, Obama, said, wait a minute. <laughs> Obama said he'd fix it, and he didn't do it either. Our congressman was on tonight on National News talking about it. Yeah. So, yeah. It hits home. Well, as we say in the ghetto, Yes, sir. Another case of a jive-ass son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> That is what we black folks say. Yeah. Yeah. Am I correct that Jack is wearing a tie tonight? Yeah, I'm wearing a tie. Make fun of me. I I had one of my I had one of my paying gigs tonight. <laughs> paying gig? Yes. So. Yeah. Yeah. You know. What's, um, what's that? I still I still do some things that have to do with media and make a little money from time to time. Really. But, but, you know, you were talking about... I haven't you, had a check for that in uh, five years almost. Well, hey, you know, you had a good run. Now, my run was not as big as your run. So when I stepped away from... And when I the get the runs, I get the runs. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> but, but when you stepped out... Uh, of the limelight of the business. No, you, I was, I was, I was kicked out of the limelight. I was trying to be nice. I was kicked I, unceremoniously kicked out of the limelight. Well, the same thing happened to me. You know, they sold a goddamn radio station out from under me, and nobody else was doing uh, anything like what we're doing here. And I said, "To hell with it! I don't want to go back to playing music, uh, although I could do it if I wanted to." Uh, you know, I said, I'll step out of this thing. And, uh, you know, sure, uh, I had a, uh, the biggest moment of disappointment for me 
I was getting gas at a service station near my house, and I was with a buddy, and I said something to him across my car, and this woman said, you sound just like a guy I used to listen to on the radio, and for the life of me, I can't remember his name. Well, you know, That's, a similar thing happened to me. That makes you feel good, right? Yeah. Uh, a similar thing happened to me. Uh, I was getting gas. Mm-hmm. Well, that's it. Yeah, I was getting gas. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the best one that ever happened to me, I was doing a personal... I lit a match, though. I was very, you know, I was decent about it. So. Yeah. Well, I was doing a personal <laughs> guys from the radio station uh, at a park, you know, uh, and um, it was during the summertime, and here in Texas during the summertime, people do need a little liquid refreshment, mm -hmm. and they had sangria. For everybody who was, you know. Mm -hmm. And this woman, you know, is going around, and the program director of the station was introducing all of us to her. Mm -hmm. And she got, and he said, and this is Jack Bishop who does afternoon. And she said, oh my God, he's black. He's black. <laughs> and I said, what? I'm black. <laughs> No wonder they took the mirrors out of the men's room. Yeah, exactly. So why do you have to dress up for whatever you do? It was a posh gig, man. I was, I was uh, oh, emceeing oh, a okay. concert oh, for oh. one of the big arts groups yeah. here in Dallas. And, and, and so uh, what, which of the hors d'oeuvres were you serving? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let you get I'm let you get away with that because you and I have known each other long <laughs> enough for me to let you get away with that. But what bothered me, I didn't have the good job of parking the cars. Those guys got tipped. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And this girl, this gal, who, who just think about this. We mentioned this moments ago. This woman who went in and shot up YouTube had mm -hmm. more hits than we do. <laughs> I think I'll not anymore. She may have had five, ten thousand people who watched her videos. You, you know, we don't even come close to that. All right, all right. You've ruined my evening. Well, we're going to be here tomorrow. She isn't. Yeah, uh, well, that's you, true. You, know? you have ruined my evening, Alex. I'm going to get off. I'm going to go over in the corner. I'm going to hang my little head down and cry the blues, because you know it hurt when you said that. Hey, hey, hey Alex, I got I got a third one for you, Alex. Yeah. All the viewer uh, uh, analytics on YouTube, mm -hmm. Facebook, and Twitter is all fake. <laughs> nobody, nobody verifies it, right? They don't come in like they do viewership on radio and television right. to verify anything. Well, it could all be fake. That's all fake too, if you ask me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. ratings and radio. No, we don't know. Fake. We're always fake. Yeah. Have you ever known anybody to be surveyed? I haven't. And uh, and how would you survey them? Well, I know they can watch turn our cameras on when we don't want them on. You know, my my uh, my head is is swimming right now because I'm trying to remember this uh, this uh, show we watched, in which there were how many episodes? Like about six episodes about some woman who it's I think it's on Netflix. I'm trying to remember what the name of it is. Who who uh, becomes enamored of this woman who has a lot of videos on YouTube or somewhere like that. So she she goes to New York and she's going to kill her, you know. Mm. And one thing leads to another, and finally, in the end, it turns all around. She becomes the popular person on YouTube. It, 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 I'm trying to remember what the show was. What was? See, that's what happens to me. I watch. There's so much television. I watch it and then I forget what the fuck it was. I, I, I was it trying sounds to like an episode of an episode of Castle. No, 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 no. This, no, this was would, this was a, okay. a this was a mini. Uh, series, yeah. Uh, I was trying to tell somebody about J.K. Uh, Simmons' show the that's counter, running now, or just pushed up. Uh, yeah. Counterpoint. Counterpart. And I, Counterpart. Counterpart. And I and I couldn't remember the name of it or what uh, um, the channel it was on. All I could say was very, very good show. Confusing to watch. Loved it. And yeah. somebody said. Well, that just goes to show you, you're an old fart if you can't remember a TV yeah, I just, I can't even remember. We watched all the episodes of it, and we really liked it. And now I can't remember what the 
fuck I, it was. You know. I can't even remember the name of the Secretary of State right now. Uh, uh, neither can <laughs> neither can Trump. Do we have a Secretary of State? I guess not. Uh, there goes, was in the batter's box. There goes Jack. He uh, he has to go because he's going to do his show. He's next over most of the same station. With Did Ames. you hear what McMaster said today? Wait a minute. We're, we're at the end of the show. We can't get into <laughs> anything more. At the end more. of the show, man. <laughs> Boy, you Come are, back tomorrow. You're, you're you also, the, it's the end of his, Tim, it's the end of his day today. Tim, you're also the king of non sequiturs as well. <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know... Well, the, well, he's worried. He's worried too about the country. The worst non sequitur of all time was when I said to a guy here in New York by the name of Joe Franklin, who had a TV show. He said, "What do you want for your children?" And I gave this big impassioned thing about a world in which they don't blah 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 blah. And the next thing he said to me was, "Hey, you know who held the torch in the Columbia Pictures?" So you know, I mean, that's that that that's what you're doing, Tim. Non sequiturs. Hey, it, it makes it makes perfect sense to me. We love you anyway, Tim. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, John. Thanks, Thank everybody. you, Jeff. Thank you, Tim, for for adding to the batch. And thanks to Jack Bishop, who's next over most of this. Hey, that's it. Everybody, if you would, please wave goodbye so they can see you. Yes, there they go. Okay, that's our citizens panel for this evening. Uh, thanks to them for calling us, because and, and no thanks to anybody else who didn't. Yeah. Sometimes we get tons of people, and sometimes we just get a small group, but whatever we get, it turns into a nice discussion. Anyway, uh, Jack's next with Amy. After that, uh, it's Connections at uh, 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time tomorrow night at uh, 9.30. Stay Damien with The Exchange, Damien Chaplin, and then tomorrow night, I'll be here too. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, yeah, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.